Hi there, everybody. Peter Greenberg here on this first Friday of May, 2022. Calendar is just flying off the uh, off the wall. Hope you're having a great time wherever you happen to be. Of course, you can always reach me, Peter at PeterGreenberg.com. With any questions you have, of course, you can log in right now on our Facebook page. I'll be glad to answer them. But first, let's talk about some news that's happening this week. You know, we've been talking for the last year about pilot shortages. And uh, we've seen it happen across the board. We've seen airlines, you know, across the board cancel their schedules, you know, completely get rid of routes because they literally can't support it. I came across a press release uh, this morning from September of last year saying JetBlue announcing 24 new routes. Guess what happened last week? They canceled 27. Uh, you're seeing Southwest cutting back their flight schedule 10%. United pulling 20,000 flights off the schedule this month alone, although United just had its biggest transatlantic expansion in the history of the airline. Last night was their inaugural flight to Oman. They're flying to Croatia. They're flying to the Azores. They're flying to the Canary Islands. Um, and in fact, it's probably going to be easier for us to travel overseas this year and this summer than it is in America for all sorts of reasons that we've talked about on the show before. Not to mention the fact that most Americans do not own an atlas and have no idea where places are. Sorry, you don't. Uh, and as a result, the worst four-letter word that starts with F, fear, is keeping you home. Good luck getting into a national park this summer. Hotel rates are through the roof in the United States. Even though the hotels are capped at 60%, why are they capped at 60%? They don't have any staff. But the rates that are getting now exceed the rates that were, they were getting in 2019. And airline fares are approaching 2019 levels and will be there next week. That's how fast they're, they're growing. It's crazy. Uh, my advice is take a look at your opportunities to go overseas. Uh, Eastern Europe is not Western Europe. What's going on in Ukraine, which is terrible and deteriorating as we speak, requires your assistance. If you can, go to our website, petergreenberg.com, and look out for AmeriCares and Doctors Without Borders and all hands and hearts at Operation USA, and of course, our friend Jose Andres, Andres and World Central Kitchen. That's just the start of where you can be helpful. Where you can be helpful to yourself is looking at a map and realizing time, distance, and space. Right now, the airfare from New York to Dublin is under 400 bucks. But the New York to Lisbon is under 550. LA to San Francisco is 410. You do the map. All right, this may be the time. Now, it's not gonna stay at that level, we're already in May. What's going to happen now with international fares and what happened with domestic fares over the past three months? They're going to go up at the rate of about 7% every four days. So anytime you wait, you lose. So get out. And you know what I would suggest? When you when you get the Atlas, pick a place that none of your friends want to go to. You can see them when you get home. This is time for bragging rights and great experience. And you'll be okay. Remember, there are 196 countries in the world there are only about 188 of them that I would recommend you can go to and you should go to. The other eight, you already know who they are, right? You're not going to be vacationing in Damascus. You're not going to be vacationing in Chechnya. You're not going to be vacationing in Yemen and probably not Camden, New Jersey, but that's another issue. Anyway, you get the point. It's still a buyer's market overseas. And in certain countries where the dollar is king, like South Africa and Turkey, I mean, my wife is always telling me, make your money in the United States and spend it in Turkey. And she's absolutely right. This is the time to go. All right. A couple of other things I want to talk about. We talked about pilot shortages. We've heard about planes diverting for emergencies. This is getting crazy. Did you see the story this week about the Virgin Atlantic flight going from London to New York? Just as it got up to altitude, the co-pilot uh, basically confesses to the pilot that he's just a cadet and has not passed his tests. What was he doing in the cockpit? You know what happened next? They declared an emergency. The plane returned to London. They landed safely. But that'll give you an idea of what's going on. They can't find enough pilots. And somehow this guy snuck in. They thought he was okay. Junior cadet. Uh, that's where we're at. Uh, also, also uh, this is one that's been going on since, since planes started flying, at least commercially, right? Every airline has tried this out. They've looked at, they've even gone to MIT to get time and motion studies to look at efficiency. How do you board an airplane? What's the most efficient way to board an airplane? Front to back, back to front, window to aisle. Nothing seems to work. Well, 
Frontier, excuse that little scoot there, Frontier has now announced that starting next month, they're going to do a test in Denver. They hate jetways. They think jetways is the problem. So what are they going to do? We're going back to the future. Portable stairs. Passengers will go downstairs, out on the tarmac, and they'll board either through the rear of the plane, through a stairway there, or the front of the plane, through a stairway there. And Frontier thinks they can save a lot of time. I mean, look, what's the worst thing that happens to you? I mean, not the worst, but the most frustrating thing for me is I'll, I'll set the scene for you. You get on a plane. It's, it's a beautiful day. Everything's on time. You board. You take your seat. That plane is brand new. It's got that new plane smell. The flight attendants are happy to see you. There's actually food on board. Uh, we take off on time. There's no weather. There's no turbulence. Everybody's happy. And then about 30 minutes or 40 minutes before you're supposed to arrive, the pilot announces, will the flight attendants prepare for an early arrival? My goodness, everything's working. And then you land and there's no jetway available and you're out there for an hour and a half. Now, think about this. There are no surprises. The, air, the airline knew from the moment you pushed back from the gate what time you'd be arriving. They had it down to the minute. So no surprises. It wasn't as if the plane landed and they went, whoops. No, they knew. So how does this happen? It happens because we become addicted to jetways. Behind just about every other jetway at every airport is what's known as a penalty box. A plane can park there without interfering physically with any other plane movement. So what Frontier is, is suggesting is no different than what I've been yelling for for years. Look, you land and you walk off the plane. If someone has a physical mobility issue, we get it. There's a ramp that can take them off and they can do that easily. But how much time are you saving in terms of crew time, fuel burn, and how about passenger time, right? So let's see what, if this uh, schedule of Frontier works. Speaking of Frontier, uh, as you may have known a couple of weeks ago, Frontier announced they were merging with the Spirit that was on the table. And then out of left field, JetBlue shows up and says they want to buy Spirit. Well, earlier this week, the Spirit board of directors said, no, we don't want to go to the dance with JetBlue. Uh, we want to go back to the dance with, with the Frontier. And so that so they rejected that offer. JetBlue is still considering a possible hostile takeover. We'll see what happens there. Because remember, whatever happens is subject to U.S. Justice Department antitrust review. My money is that the U.S. Justice Department would never have approved a JetBlue Spirit merger. Never. They were already uh, objecting officially to the JetBlue alliance with American, which is not really a merger, but it's an alliance. So we'll see what happens. But uh, if you listen to our radio show tomorrow, Ion Travel, check your local stations, or you can also stream it live by going to our website at about 10 o'clock in the morning Eastern time. I talked to Barry Biffle, the CEO of Frontier, and he'll talk about what's going on in their crazy world right now of mergers, acquisitions, and possible consolidation. What's good, bad, and ugly. And we'll also talk maybe even about those, those uh, jetways. Uh, now, one other thing, speaking of delays, you got to laugh about this. Uh, the world of destination weddings this year is through the roof. That's right. 2.5 million destination weddings this year, a huge increase over the last two years. And in fact, the cost of each destination wedding, about $27,000. That's up 25% from last year. And that's just the, the, that's the beginning of, of the cost, right? I love this story. There is a couple flying out to Las Vegas for their destination wedding. And they had to like change planes three times. And the planes were so late and they missed so many connections that on their final flight, which was a Southwest flight, they said, the hell with it. Let's just get married on the plane. And they did. It's a great video. You'll find it on YouTube. And uh, they even had it. And the flight attendant even served as the DJ. They were dancing in the aisles. Saved a lot of money too. <laughs> so, so much for that. Uh, by the way, one other piece of so-called good news, and that's, you may remember about a year and a half ago in the midst of the pandemic, United Airlines announced what we never thought any airline would announce, that they were getting rid of, and they said forever, I, I remember that word they used, those draconian ticket change fees, so that if you had to cancel a flight, you wouldn't lose your money, which would have been wiped out by those fees, and it would go into an account that you could use for future flights. They made one exception, and as the other airlines followed suit, as they normally do, they made the same exception. The one exception on that would be the basic economy fare. I say use it or lose it fare. And I've said this before, I'll say it again. Anybody flying basic economy, as far as I'm concerned, 
has to be either in the witness relocation program or be a fugitive from justice, because I'm presuming you're flying light. But it's not a good investment. Uh, and it is a use it or lose it proposition. Well, earlier this week, United then said, no, you know what we're going to do? We're going to change the rules on the basic economy ticket so that if you can't use it, you can pay an additional surcharge to upgrade to the next fare category, but you won't lose your initial investment. It's better than nothing, so it's a start. But again, why would you buy the basic economy fare in the beginning? Here's what you want to do. When you go online, assuming you go online to make your reservations, and I have, I have an issue with that anyway, as many of you know, but if you're still going to do that, almost the very first fare you're going to see quoted is a basic economy fare, right, with all of those restrictions, right? Everything short of you can't breathe. But the next fare category after that usually averages out to be $30 per leg or segment. That's your insurance policy. Buy that one so that if you have to cancel, there's no upgrading charge. There's no surcharge. It just goes into your account. You can use the funds later. All right. But so at least United Airlines, you know, had a start. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about a travel story that most of you don't think is a travel story, but it's going to become a travel story. It's the leaked draft of the Supreme Court decision on Roe versus Wade. How is that a travel story? Because as you know, there are about 22 states that if this law is overturned, if this ruling stands, they have trigger laws that then make it immediately illegal to get an abortion in those states, which means women seeking abortions will have to do what? Travel to other states. Throw this cartoon up. Strange, huh? I'm not getting into politics, but the reality is, I hate to say it, we may be on the verge of abortion tourism, where states like California and New York will develop entire packages for women seeking help, assuming they can afford it. Uh, look, uh, nothing's definitive yet, but the fact that this cartoon is running, the fact that it's out there, and the fact that the travel industry is getting ready for it tells you something. Anyway, something to think about. Obviously, we'll be following this as the days and weeks progress and we await that uh, the, the official decision from the court. Uh, now, I have a trivia question for you today before we get... Actually, you know what? Let me go through and say hello to a couple people. Then we'll go to the trivia question. Here we go. Patrick saying hello from LA. Scott saying, ah, all carnival ships are now sailing. There we go. Happy Derby Day. And by the way, everybody, happy early Mother's Day. Uh, okay. Hello from Tanzania. Hello from Louisville. Uh, that's Scott saying hello there. Mary Jo is saying, any idea when the U.S. will eliminate the return COVID testing requirement? I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'm absolutely convinced it'll be after, after Memorial Day. So another three and a half weeks. That's my guess. Uh, hello from Mei Ling. Hello, Mei Ling. Sandy saying hello from Charlotte. David saying hello from Tanzania. I just got back from Tanzania last week in our premiere of the Royal Tour of Tanzania there. Uh, it's a show that you can see on Amazon Prime and on Apple TV+. Plus. It's also playing on your local PBS station if you can't find it online. I hope you get a chance to see it. Uh, and Willie's always saying hello from Atchison, Kansas. Sue is saying hello from Bellingham, Washington. Zakayo is another one from Tanzania. Camilla, happy Aloha Friday from Tucson. Okay. Uh, David's saying hello from Tanzania. Uh, okay. Uh, let's go here. Oh. Rwanda. They're saying hi from Rwanda. All right. Uh, and Sandy, same question from Sandy Collins. Any info when the U.S. will get rid of the antigen test to return? I'm still thinking end of this month. Uh, Hal says, my wife's AA point 70,000 expired April 2nd. She called AA on April 20th, and they told her to restore the points. It would cost her $450. With COVID, she could not fly. Anything we can do. Hal, you're not going to like the answer. American just didn't wake up in the morning and said your, your points expired on April 2nd. They probably emailed you and sent you mailings for a long time saying that. And those are pro and, and remember, all you had to do was either use an American Airlines uh, related credit card or fly once to get them extended. However, let's look at the good news here if you want to look at it in relative terms. Uh, $70,000, excuse me, 70,000 miles will redeem you a ticket that will probably cost you a whole lot more than $450. So given that choice, you have, actually you have two choices. Talk to a supervisor, explain, throw yourself on the mercy of their frequent flyer program. And if that doesn't work, then pay the 450 
And remember, your your miles do expire. In some cases, if you don't use your if you don't use the airline in any way, shape, or form, either with a credit card purchase or an actual flight, it used to be 36 months. Some of them have reduced it to 12 months. You gotta be on top, you gotta be on top of that. Okay, Debbie says hello from Boynton Beach. Uh, oh, oh, I missed the SpaceX launch this morning. I heard it was beautiful. Our good friend Peter King from CBS News is covering that. Uh, all right, uh, Pat saying hello from the Cinque Terre. Okay, uh, Sandy says she loved the Tanzania Royal Tour. Thank you so much, Sandy. Uh, Jean saying hello from Tulsa. Applied for global entry Tuesday night. On Wednesday night, I received the email with conditional approval and noticed the scheduled interview Wednesday. What? This never happens. This is the you. You now call Guinness. You now have the world record for the fastest global entry process I've ever heard of. Wow. Uh, she said the closest place was two hours away, and they had an opening the very next day. She was approved for global entry Thursday morning. Good for you. Wow. By the way, global entry happens to be, in my book, the best government program when it comes to travel they've ever invented, other than pre-clearance. If you don't know what pre-clearance I'm not pre-check, pre-clearance. In fact, pre-clearance has been around since 1952, for those of you who keep count. It started in Canada. It's in the Bahamas. It's in Bermuda. It's in Ireland, it's in Abu Dhabi and a number of other locations where you clear US customs and immigration there in those countries on your return flight. So that when your plane lands back in the US, you're not standing in any line, you're not going through any procedures, you get your bags or your bags connect and you go home. It's a, it's a great deal. I'm, I'm waiting for pre-clearance in London. I'm waiting for pre-clearance at Charles de Gaulle. I'm waiting for pre-clearance in Hong Kong and Bangkok. I mean, I wanna see the big choke point airports but anytime I go to Ireland, I thank my lucky stars, or in some cases, my lucky charms, that they have pre-clearance, because coming home is a breeze. Uh, Hamza is saying hi from Tanzania. So is Aliu. Hello to you guys. Uh, okay. Uh, Laser saying, keep up the good work. Thank you. Ah, we're talking about Tanzania again. A lot of Tanzania folks are here. Yeah. All right. Asante Sana and Caribou. All right. Ah, Jill says she just got back from an amazing week in Jordan. Petra, Wadi Rum, Aqaba, Amman, the Dead Sea, unforgettable. I couldn't agree more. I'm a huge fan of Jordan. Remember, our very first royal tour 21 years ago was with the King of Jordan, and it's still available today. It's an amazing, amazing country. Uh, and uh, I hardly, and as I just mentioned last night, was the first airline in the United States to fly to Jordan since the old days of Pan Am. It was United Airlines last night from Washington, Dulles to Amman. So uh, it's coming back. All right. Um, all right. I'm looking here. Ah, more, more, uh, uh, more t folks from Tanzania. Uh, some people writing me actually in Swahili, which means I can't read it, but thank you anyway. I hope. Um, having a great cruise from New York City to Rome. That's what Gary says. Next up, Alicante in Barcelona. Good for you. I'm jealous. Ah, someone's saying hello from Arusha. That's where I was a week ago yesterday. I loved it. What an amazing premiere we had that night with the president in Arusha, not far, of course, from Kilimanjaro. Uh, okay. Uh, ah, Lee saying hi from Franklin, Tennessee. Okay. Ah, you asked me about my favorite apps. We've got a few of them posted on our website, Lee, and I'll, I'll get back to you on that, okay? Because it's like, that's like asking me about my favorite airline. I can't give you one answer for that. It has to be done by route. So, if you want to give me a much more specific question about apps for what, I might be able to help you there. Josh says, hello. Katrina says, hello from Alabama. Steven's saying, hello from DFW. Uh, ah, would I recommend a couple of Turkish bathhouses in Istanbul for me? I can. You're talking about the hammams. Uh, check out our show called Hidden Turkey, and you'll see the place you need to go to in Istanbul. It's probably the oldest hammam in the world. And I'm telling you, you can't get better than that. It's the old school stuff. Your skin will come out red and you'll come out happy. Uh, okay, let's go here. Ah, Colleen is saying, greetings from Ljubljana. We know Ljubljana. Having a fabulous uh, trip and guess what? Ah, there you go. Ah, thank you again for that nice word, Colleen. I appreciate that. Okay, another, Edwin's calling in from Tanzania. Joy is saying, do I know some airlines give you senior citizens rates on airline tickets? You know what? In the old days, there was something called a senior rate. In fact, United Airlines had a completely senior class of ticket. 
These days, there's so many different discounts available, it doesn't work. And the reason for that is this. They'll tell you it's like 10% off or 20% off. But in many cases, the problem with the pricing was it was 10 to 20% off of their highest published fare. It's sort of like their compassion fares. Everybody thinks if, you're, if your Uncle Vinny dies, the airlines are going to give you a discount. It doesn't work that way that way anymore. It's amazing how many Uncle Vinny's died on December 23rd and July 1st, if you know what I mean. Uh, but the compassion fares are more difficult to get. And in many cases, they're a discount from their highest published fares. And if it is the last minute, maybe it makes sense. But obviously, you're not planning ahead for Uncle Vinny to die. So you see the trade-off there. Uh, okay. Uh, Pam wants to know, was I in the Austin Admirals Club on Monday? I was not. On Monday, I was actually in Denver. So sorry I missed you there. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, I'm a lot of Tanzania flights here. Uh, all right, here we go. Oh, a lot of friends of mine who are Maasai are calling in. I love it. Uh, okay. Ah. Patrick says, the idea of, of Frontier doing the the, uh, the boarding from the tarmac, he says, I think some airlines avoid using available gates due to fuel trucks, cleaners, baggage handlers, and catering are arranged in advance at a certain gate, and using a different gate is disruptive for them. We're not talking about a gate. We're talking about, for example, let's, let's say there's a gate 33 and it has a jetway. You would still board the plane from gate 33. You just go down the stairs, go behind the jetway to the plane parked behind it. That's what we're talking about. So it's not taking up any space now used for catering trucks or fuel trucks or rampers or anybody like that. Uh, okay. Hello for Ann Arbor, says Randy. Planning for a cruise in August from Istanbul to Haifa. You know what? The good news is the cruise ships are back to Turkey. And they're back to Israel. I like hearing that. Um, okay. Ellen says, basic economy is great if you have a co-branded credit card. Luggage then becomes included. That's not what I'm talking about, Ellen. I'm talking about if you have to cancel. You lose it, co-branded or not. At least now with the United thing, hopefully other airlines will follow suit. You won't. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, ah. Do I recommend, Michelle wants to know, do I recommend wearing an N95 mask on the plane as, uh, or a regular mask? N95 has always been the way to go. It's, it offers you the most protection. I bring one with me, and depending on who's sitting next to me now on the plane, if they're coughing, wheezing, or drooling, I'm wearing the mask. If not, I'm not. However, if I'm on a subway, train, or bus, mask is on. Okay? No matter what that judge in, in Florida said. Um, okay, Karen saying hello from Townsend in Delaware. Um, and, and Priya, of course, Priya always comes in from Irvine. Gail's in Morrisville, Pennsylvania. Cold and rainy, she says. Hello from Northern California from Dorothy. Uh, okay. Here's one from Laser who says he's coming from Tanzania. He says, many of the Tanzanian youth, Tanz, Tanz, Tanzanian, excuse me, youth have passion and huge visions of being tour guides. Uh, how will you and your group help the village youth who study hard but lack employment? Well, it's not my job to promote tourism. As you know, it's my job to present countries and destinations and to give audiences, hopefully, intelligent information that they can make an, an informed choice. However, if people then see our show and that gives them the idea they might want to go to Tanzania, the market will speak. Uh, I, I have it on pretty good authority that the government is working hard to increase the pipeline and the educational opportunities so that you can go through those, those, those schools and courses and not only become a tour guide, but get hired. The market is going to grow. It has, look, the average GDP for travel and tourism on a global scale is pretty high. In Tanzania, it's already at 17%. And what that means is it's going to get bigger. Okay. Uh, Jonah saying hello from San Jose. What do I think about travel clubs like Club, Priority, and oh, Prior, and Indigar, to name a few affordable ones? That's a longer conversation, Joan. And it needs much more specifics in terms of destination and price. I can't give you a singular answer on that, but we will get more specific. <coughs> Excuse my cough. All right. Sid saying hello from downtown Miami. Uh, Karen loves my wife's advice. Earn the money here. Spend it elsewhere. It's true. Uh, good morning from sunny Minnesota. Sean is saying happy Friday from Coral Gables. And Karen is saying from, hello from New York. Um uh, Okay, a uh, lot of Tanzania folks love to hear from you. Raymond Bixon saying hello from Bayshore. I haven't seen Raymond in about two hours. 
but nice that you're watching, Raymond. Uh, Peter's saying, uh, thanks, thank, thank you. Come, please come again to Tanzania. You won't have to force me. When you see the show and you see what we did in Zanzibar and in Pemba Island, you'll see why I'm going to go back. And for all my friends in Zanzibar and Stonetown, if you wake up tomorrow and two or three of those huge wooden doors are missing, I probably stole them. I, I'm kidding. But boy, are they beautiful. Okay. Let's go to the trivia question. This one's a good one, guys. It's really a good one. Are you ready? And uh, you have to think hard about this one. Which country spans the most time zones? I'll say it again. Which country spans the most time zones? If you think you know the answer, you're probably going to be wrong. I'll give you that hint. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, okay. Uh, Patricia says, what about that cruise ship in Seattle with COVID? Will this hurt our cruise ship business? Patricia, no, it won't. Let me explain the story about the Carnival Spirit. There were over 3,000 passengers and crew on board. There were 100 cases. That's less. Than, that's about 3%, right? If you had a 3% case rate in Seattle, you'd throw a block party. Remember, the cruise ships could not start cruising again unless they complied with about 75 different protocols from the CDC, including ventilation, dining, physical design of the rooms, quarantine areas, medical facilities, tracing, all those things are in place. And uh, and by the way, passengers have to be vaccinated. Crew and officers have to be vaccinated. So in the situation that happened in Seattle, Carnival basically got those affected passengers, most of whom either had mild symptoms or were asymptomatic, they'd all been vaccinated, into hotels to quarantine them. I think they're out by now. It's about a three-day quarantine, and that's it. No hospitalizations and no deaths. A far cry from two and a half years ago. And the ships are full. Right. By the way, I just got my second booster shot this morning. If you're qualified for it, get it. Okay. Um, all right. Ramey is saying, leaving for Portugal and France on Tuesday. Oh, thank you for your great information on Lisbon. You're welcome. Have fun. I gave you those restaurants. You better go. You will thank me for that. Um, okay. Hello from the uh, from the festival in Cordoba, Spain. Okay. Uh, uh, for Lisa wants to know, good afternoon for fall airfare travel. Purchase tickets now or wait. Still anticipate an increase in fares? I do. However, remember, the fourth quarter is looking weak right now. As strong as the second and third quarter is going to be and already is, fourth quarter is going to drop off. So when you talk about fall travel, I hope you're talking about after September 15th. And if you're talking about after September 15th, I'd wait about three weeks and then pounce. Okay. All right, more. Oh, Jew is back on from Japan. Jew is always on from Japan. Lovely to see you on this. Uh, okay, a lot of, uh, my goodness, it's Tanzania Festival today, guys. I love it. Uh, okay, everybody's congratulating Jean on getting her global entry in 24 hours. Unheard of. I mean, this is a story we better call in. Um, all right. Uh, I'm looking here. Ah, Patty says, we love pre-clearance. Didn't know about it until we went to Ireland. You know about it now. You live for it now. I will sometimes come back through Ireland just for that. Because in the one and a half hours I'm connecting planes in Ireland, there's great duty-free shopping. And then you get back on the plane, you clear your pre-clearance there, and you go home. Okay. Uh, ah, Sandy always has that question. I think we have an answer, Sandy. She says, is there any update on the gem, the Grand Egyptian Museum? Anthony has researched this on my team for the last seven weeks. And the closest we can get is it's going to open between November 15th and the 30th of this year. That's what we got. Okay. And Jumbo to Amos. Um, okay. Richard saying, I'm planning a trip to France. What D-Day tours would you suggest for quality and best price? Well, believe it or not, I'm going to be doing one this year to help support the, the University of Wisconsin Alumni Association. It's departing Lisbon on June 8th, and it's stopping in Normandy. And on board the ship will be David Eisenhower, uh, Dwight Eisenhower's grandson, married to Julie Eisenhower, Richard Nixon's daughter. And uh, Dr. Eisenhower will be lecturing about, of course, his grandfather as well as Winston Churchill. And we will be on the beach in Normandy uh, about, about two weeks after we, actually about 10 days after we start the cruise. So check that out. 
It all goes to support the University of Wisconsin Alumni Association. I hope I'm, I'm a badger, if you hadn't noticed. So I hope you'll join me. And uh, I'll be speaking on the ship as well about another war, the war in Vietnam and what happened at the University of Wisconsin. So uh, a lot of Alumni Association members will be on board as well. So it's uh, June 8th. Check out the University of Wisconsin Alumni Association. They'll have all the information for you. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, oh, Dorothy wants to know, hi from Northern California. How soon to purchase airfare to fly to Italy in October? In about 45 days. There you go. Uh, okay. Uh, ah, Gary's saying, there are 23 COVID cases on board the transatlantic cruise I'm on right now but no official announcement. Should cruise ships be forced to tell passengers when there's COVID on board? Actually, I'm surprised they haven't. Nobody wants to be, to be panicked, but I'm a huge believer in full disclosure. How many passengers are on your ship, Gary? It ain't 23. It's probably over 2,500. So look at that caseload. It's less than 1%. Let people know. Let them know what you're doing. If people can understand the process, they'll appreciate the product. They will understand. No one's going to panic. They've been identified. They've been traced. They've been quarantined. Continue with your cruise. Guess what? I'm assuming you're vaccinated, and I don't think it's really affected your cruise, right? It might affect your mental condition because you don't know. So I'm a big fan of full disclosure. Um, ah, Donna says, I went to a wonderful hammam in Istanbul a couple of weeks ago. My rest my case. Um, okay. Um uh, I'm looking here. Okay. Simon saying hi. Mary saying, what are the must sees in Southern France? Where in Southern France? I need more specifics. All right. I haven't seen any guesses yet about which country spans the most time zones. I'm looking. I'm looking for guesses here. <laughs> I love this question from Gail Huber. Do I have a favorite horse in the Kentucky Derby? You know, I don't know anything about horse racing, but I did go to the Kentucky Derby once. And, you know, when I filled out the betting form, because you're there, you're going to bet. I filled out the jockey colors that I thought were the cutest. And the son of a bitch won. And then I did the smart thing. Never do that again. Okay. Um, okay. Ah, oh, Randall said, oh, Randall, Randy. Randall, I, I've never called you Randy. It's Randall. She's moved there to France. I, I can't wait to come visit you and your husband and your kid. So I'll be there soon. Uh, all right. Uh, okay. Now we have some guesses. Pam says it's Africa. Uh, someone else is guessing Russia. Incorrect. Everybody's guessing Russia. Incorrect. Spain. Incorrect. Russia. Incorrect. Okay. Russia. Canada. Wrong. United States. Absolutely wrong. Uh, Canada or Russia. Wrong. Canada spans the most. Gary, Gary you're wrong. Um, Scott says, it's Russia. Wrong. Mary says, Antarctica. Really wrong. Uh, Sandy's saying Russia again. My goodness. Okay. Uh, oh, someone else is getting, is it the United States with territories? You're throwing in Puerto Rico and Guam? Uh, that would be wrong. Okay, but you got the right idea. Ah, Debbie's got it. I think somebody else got it. Hold on. Debbie got it. And hold on. I thought somebody else guessed it. I'm scrolling up here. You're all going to be surprised when you hear it. I'm trying to give credit where credit's due. I'm looking for that other guest who got it right. Debbie Schmaltz got it. And come on, I got to find it for you. Uh, <laughs> and Evelyn got it. Evelyn Holborn got it. One of our photo winners, too. The answer is you're never going to believe it. It's France because you include all their overseas territories which is everything from, you know, islands in, off the coast of Canada to Tahiti. It's France. It's France. Nobody gets it, but there you have it. Pretty cool, right? Now, how many time zones does it span? For those of you who guessed Russia, you were pretty close, but it can't beat France. Russia, I mean, France spans 12 different time zones. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right, let's, let's, uh, let's go to the photo of the week while we got it. And there it is. Boy, you got the windmill and the sunset. And the winner is this is Carol Rosenthal, who writes, greetings from the Netherlands. This photo was captured outside of Hoom, 
a charming little town about an hour outside of Amsterdam, chock full of tulip fields and windmills. The tulips are beautiful and the windmills still work. How cool is that? So, uh, Carol, congratulations on that. If you think you have a photo of the week that qualifies, you know what to do. Send it in to us, peter at petergreenberg.com. And if we like it, it goes right up on the screen. Let's go to some questions that you guys asked that you already sent in earlier. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Bill says, what do we think is the biggest travel problem right now? It's the travel problem that's always been. Nobody's talking to each other. Everybody's still siloed. There are different rules and regulations. Uh, nobody's getting together. There's no universal passport uh, in terms of vaccines. There's no universal acceptance of certain criteria. And the confusion and chaos is getting crazy. That's the first one. And the second one is, of course, on, on local government regulations now, it's the same problem. People need to get together on this. It's the same virus. Okay. Uh, ah. Catherine wants to know, do you still need a, a negative COVID uh, PCR test to get into Turkey from America, or is it just okay to show my vaccine card? The answer is, it's just okay to show your vaccine card. No need for testing in Turkey anymore, which is great. Uh, but you do have to complete a traveler entry form uh, that you present at check-in and upon arrival, and you can go online, and, and any airline flying to Turkey can show you how to do that online. It ends up with a QR code, easy to fill out. Just make sure you do it now so you don't have to wait in line when you get to Istanbul, okay? Let's go back to some questions here. Uh, okay, ah, curious as to know how many flights are currently being canceled on a daily basis. There is no one answer for that because there's operational stuff and then there's downright weather stuff. But let's just say, if you're asking about flights being taken off the schedule between now and the end of the summer, it's at about eight to 9% almost on every airline, domestically. Uh, okay, ah. Caroline says, I don't understand why airlines can't board from the back of the plane forward. Well, they're going to try that with Frontier. Part of it, anyway. Um, okay. Says, I checked on Amazon Prime and Apple TV in Canada, but didn't see Tanzania, the Royal Tour. Where can I find it? Uh, I think we answered that question. Um, and it's basically, go to PBSD. It stands for PBS Distribution, and they can help you out. Okay? Now, a couple of other housekeeping notes. Of course, our radio show tomorrow, Eye on Travel, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Check your local listings. If you can't find it, we stream it live starting at 10.05 a.m. Eastern. Just go to our website, petergreenberg.com, and off you go. Uh, the Season 7 of The Travel Detective on PBS premieres in about a week on May 14th. So check your local listings. It's also available on Amazon Prime and Apple TV+. Plus. And, of course, all of our royal tours in the last couple of years, plus all of our hidden shows, are also available on those two services. And last but not least, happy Mother's Day. I hope you guys are traveling safely. And if you see the Royal Tour of Tanzania, let me know what you think. Uh, we, we love doing it. It's a country that uh, is well worth visiting, and we had a great time. So happy early Mother's Day, everybody. Anthony, thanks for your help on, on, on your end today out in California. And we will see you next week. I believe it'll be Thursday, could be Wednesday. We'll let you know as the week develops because so many things are happening in the world of travel. Sometimes even I don't know where I am, but I will see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week.